Today we're gonna to turn a thin greenwood bowl. Hi, I'm Kent and welcome to Turn a Wood Bowl. Today we're gonna to take this piece of greenwood pecan and we're gonna turn a really thin live edge bowl. Now, I was just out cutting this log today. This tree had been down for a couple months, but it's still holding a ton of moisture. And the particular section that I've got here was deep inside that log. So very little moisture had escaped since it was taken down. So it's good and wet. We should get a nice clean cut and I should be able to turn this pretty thin. So let's go ahead and put it on the lathe and see what we get. Okay, so before I mount this to the lathe, I need to clear off some of this bark. I just use a, a simple chisel and a mallet to remove some bark from the center area. And I'm going to be using a spur drive center along with the tailstock to mount the, the bull blank initially to the lathe. All right, I'm going to you know, use a pencil and I'm going to check the high spots on both top edges of the blank here. And I can see that this side is a little bit higher. So what I want to do is I want to take some time here and really make this adjusted just properly. So I loosen the tail stop, stock and drop that down just a bit. And now we can see that they're lined up better than they were before. Now we also want to line up the low spots of the bark. You can see on this side it's slower than this side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that to the top and loosen the tailstock again and I'm going to lift the blank just a touch. And then I'm going to tighten the tailstock again. Now if we check that low spot again, I can see that they're in very similar spots there. So the more time we take here, the more centered the bowl will be as we progress and we're going to have better results with the overall look and the symmetry of the bowl. Now this is my 5 8 inch bowl gouge. This is a little bit bigger bowl gouge. It's great for removing material, bulk of material, and that's what we're obviously going to be doing right now. And I'm just using a push cut and I'm using the left wing of the bowl gouge to remove material. This bowl blank is actually pretty well balanced. I'm able to get the lathe speed up pretty pretty high here initially without any vibrations being introduced in the lathe. A lot of people ask me what's my lathe speed. I don't have a lathe uh, RPM readout on my lathe and I really don't need it because I can actually tell what the speed's going to be. You can tell when it's going too fast. You can also tell by uh, the fact that there's vibration. I've got a video all about lathe speed. You might want to check that out. Now the other thing too is tool rest. If you saw there, there was a big gap because that first corner came off and then I needed to move the tool rest up in order to match that. I've also got a tool rest video if you're interested in that, if you want more information about the tool rest. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm just kind of working like a 45 degree angle at this point and trying to reduce that material. And it's going to be cleaning up the side of the bowl and the bottom of the bowl all at the same time. Here I'm going to lay out a flat circle at the base of the of the bowl blank so that I can start uh, putting I want to put in the, the cylinder for the tenon and the shoulder before I get too far into this. I use dividers to mark the width of the tenon. Now I've got a great video that shows how to make a perfect tenon. I highly suggest checking that out because it's going to guide you through the whole process of, of forming a tenon. A tenon really needs to be built perfectly with a good shoulder and angled dovetails. Now, I'm not going to be making the dovetail angles at this moment because I have so much more turning to do. I like to leave the dovetail angle to the very end right before I flip the bowl around. But for right now, I need to have an idea of how much real estate or how much wood I have at the base of this bowl and what the overall shape is going to be. So you can see, now I can see that I've got a tenon area, a shoulder area, and I got an idea of how much material is left to be shaping the bowl. So I'm going to continue shaping the exterior of the bowl. Look how wet that wood is. You can see the shine in there and the highlight from the light. 
as the uh, new material is being exposed. And it cuts really well. Now, one of the main reasons this that green wood cuts so well compared to drier wood is that the end grain. So if you think of the of the wood like straws and the grain going through it like straws, well, the ends of those straws dry out very quickly. And that's where the end grain is located. Well, that's where we get tear out and, and we have issues with end grain. When you have green wood, almost all of the wood cells are just filled with water and they're plump so they're easier to cut and because of that it's that's why we get those great shavings like that is you get some some it's really easy to to move through it with a sharp bull gouge it's almost like a bar of soap compared to drier wood now here you can see I'm creating the shape of the exterior I want to make a, a little bit of an indentation here because I, I don't want that tenon and the shoulder of the tenon to be fooling me into um, thinking that the bottom of this bowl is going to be bigger than that. I'm actually going to shape the base of this bowl much smaller, but I'm going to leave the tenon large for right now so we have good stability when this bowl is turned around and we work the interior of the bowl. Look at those shavings coming off. It's pretty impressive. There's a lot of pluses for turning green wood. It's relatively easy. It's easy on the tools. You don't build up heat too much. Everything cuts very well with the green wood. The only real downside with turning green wood bowls is that because they're wet, they're going to deform or change shape as they dry. But with a natural edge or a live edge bowl, that's not so much of a big deal. You really don't notice it so much. All right, here I'm actually going to do a backward, which would be considered a backward cut against the supported grain. Typically, you want to work with a side grain bowl. You want to work from the base up to the rim. But what I'm doing here is I'm working from the rim down. That is being done intentionally so that I'm working to keep that bark intact along the rim edge. If I work the other way, there's a good chance that I'm going to knock that bark off. So just this small area, I'm going to work up against the supported grain. Now, if you're not familiar with what a supported grain cut is, I've got a great video on supported grain cut. And I've got several different examples in there to help, help you remember exactly what direction to be cutting when you're turning a side grain bull blank. So what I'm looking for here is I just want to make sure that I've got a clean cut all the way up to that bark edge. So that area is defined. Now I'm going to keep refining the exterior of this until I get the shape that I want. And I'm going to blend that into the cut that was made up towards the top. Now this is a push cut and I'm using my half inch 55 degree bevel bull gouge to make this cut. And I'm taking my time because I want this to be really close to a finish cut. A very smooth cut that's going to have a nice smooth finish. Now I'm using a little bit of a pull cut. This is a pull scrape cut just to remove a little bit of material. And then I'm returning to a push cut. I'm riding the bevel. And I'm just taking off a thin area. Now, if you look to the right side of the screen, that's what I'm actually looking at. I'm not looking down at the bowl gouge as I'm doing this. I'm looking at the shape that it's producing on the opposite side of the bowl. It's starting to get there, except we have a uh, an edge where those two surfaces come together, and that obviously needs to be smoothed out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, I'm going to pull this area in with a little bit of a scraping cut, but I'm going to drop the handle and I'm going to use a shear scrape. Now the shear scrape is a very light finishing cut with the bowl gouge on the exterior of the bowl gouge only. You don't want to do that in the interior. Here you can see I've got the handle dropped down and I'm using the bottom wing with the flute almost closed up against the surface of the bowl. And I'm just using this basically to shave the surface. 
I've also changed the position of the tool rest so it's about a 90 degree angle. Now I've got a video all about the shear scrape. You want to check that out. This is a great finishing cut and a technique to use when shaping the exterior of the bowl. And remember, the exterior of the bowl is the bowl. So you want to take your time and really establish the shape. The interior just follows that shape. Here you can see I have this little bit of a divot. I want to mark that with a pencil so I know exactly where it is. And what I have to do is I have to reduce the area around that until it's all flush and level. So I'm going to use the shear scrape and I'm just going to glide back and forth. And the interesting thing about the shear scrape is it's such a gentle, delicate cut that it is independent of the supported grain. So you don't have to worry so much about the supported grain. It's not going to tear out ingrain fibers like most of the other cuts will. So you can just basically move back, back and forth and just lightly level off that entire area. Now I'm going to come back to the tenon and I'm going to clean this up. Now the reason I didn't do this earlier is that if the bull blank moves or shifts or vibrates at all, and I've already created this dovetail back here, then there's a chance that it's not centered up. I'm going to use my spindle detail gouge. This is a 3 8 inch spindle detail gouge. And I'm going to just start a light cut, and I'm going to push in at about, it's a slight angle. I don't have this in exact degrees, but my dovetail on my four jaw chuck is about an 11 degree angle. You could pretty much eyeball it after you've made a few. Now the most important part of this tenon is the tenon area where it meets the shoulder. It needs to be a good clear area. Now what I'm doing here with the spindle gouge is I'm scraping off a little bit of that surface of the shoulder to make sure it's good and flat. And I'm going to undercut that inside corner. That's going to allow my four jaw chuck to thoroughly grip the entire tenon and that way I've got a really good fit on the chuck. I'm going to take that nub down just a little bit. I'm going to jump back over to my half inch bull gouge, doing a push cut in towards the headstock. That little bit of nub is going to be an issue in the chuck. It might get in the way, so I'm going to, I'm going to chisel that off. So the exterior of the bull has been shaped now we can get it ready to reverse it. Just going to knock off that nub real quick. And I'll go ahead and get my Four jaw chuck. You want to tighten that up with the hand crank or the hand wheel versus spinning it by hand. Now you also want to make sure there's no debris inside the tenon or inside the chuck. Any, any little dust in that can set that off center and make it not turn true. With wet wood, you're going to want to tighten that up and you want to check it periodically. Also, when I was using the tailstock, you want to make sure that tailstock is tightened up frequently because the wet wood keeps, um, it's soft and basically you can keep compressing it frequently. I'm using my 5 8 inch bull gouge again here. I'm just using this to remove the top bark layer. I want to get the center area cleaned up, get as much of that out of the way as possible. And I want to get this area next to the rim prepared for a lighter cut. Now I'm using my half inch bull gouge. Both of my bull gouges have a 55 degree swept back bevel profile. If you want to learn how to shape and sharpen the bull gouge, you can check out my tool sharpening e-course. Now I'm just lightly coming in and working this rim to get to establish my wall thickness. This is going to be really critical to establish it here. Once I establish this wall thickness, that's going to be the same wall thickness all the way down the, the bowl. 
Now, before I get into the final cuts or the final passes to establish that thickness, I really need to sharpen my bowl gouge. Again, check out my tool sharpening for wood bowl turning online e-course. In that course, I'm going to show you everything you need to shape and sharpen all the tools to turn wood bowls. And I'm going to show you about, I think there's about five or six different bowl gouge profiles. And I'll explain exactly what, they'll, what they all do and why you'd want to shape a bowl gouge like that. But after you're done with this course, you're going to be able to sharpen all of your tools just like a professional. And it's going to make wood bowl turning so easy for you. So check that out. I'll have a link below in the description. Okay, so now I'm back at this and I'm going to establish that final thickness. I want to get it below a quarter of an inch or about around five millimeters thick. And that's feeling pretty good right there. It's nice and even, but I need to thin it out just a little bit more. Just want to make a slow, light cut here. Just take your time, establish that thickness. Yeah, it's looking good. Now what I need to do is I basically just need is the left wing to remove material. And I'm going to kind of create a ditch next to the side wall and slowly work down. The center mass of this bowl is holding it all and keeping those wings intact so they don't flop around. If I cleared out the center first, we're going to have very unstable walls. And to make them thin, it's going to be pretty much impossible at that point. Instead, we're going to work from the wall down and hollow out kind of backwards. A lot of people like to start from the center of the bowl and work up or work, work out to the rim. This is the point of view you want as you're making this cut. As you can see, I'm matching the bull gouge bevel to the exterior of the, of the bowl itself as I'm making this cut. You want to be standing upright so you can actually see the shape of the bowl. I want to parallel that exterior shape the entire time that I'm working that the inside out. If I lean over and look down into the bowl, I'm not going to be able to tell where the shape of the bowl is or exterior of the bowl is. If you'd like to get more wood bowl turning tips, then sign up for my free turning tips. You can go to turnawoodbowl.com forward slash tips. So as I acquire the wall thickness that I want from the rim down, then I can start removing some of the center area. I'm only working a couple inches down at a time. And I'll take that center down and then I will work out towards the rim and then reduce the, the wall, side, wall thickness down to the same thickness as the top portion until I reach all the way to the bottom. I'm basically making push cuts using the side wings. Here I'm using the left wing with the bull gouge at about the 10 o'clock position. And I'm just removing material down into the bowl. You see the moisture coming out of the end grain. Just keep working that inside material, moving it out of the way. And what we're doing is you're basically mimicking the curve that you're going to need for the wall. And I'm only working a, an inch or two section here at a time. Now, when I get down to the final thickness, I'm taking my time and I'm making a really light cut. I want that to be nice and clean. I don't want there to be any, any catches or any rough spots there. Stop frequently and use your fingers to determine the thickness. You'd be surprised. You can you can tell right away if you've got if you if the thickness is proper. There was a little bit of bark there. This this piece of pecan is really neat because it actually has almost two different types of bark. There's like an under bark and then a top like shaggy bark. Well, the shaggy bark pretty much all broke away. 
and it's not on there but there's an under bark that actually looks great too so I just took a, that last piece of the kind of the shaggy bark section here I'm, I'm turning the bull gouge a little bit farther to the left and I'm making a deeper pass and that's removing material a little bit quicker the bowl is completely balanced at this point and I've got my speed up about as fast as I'm going to turn so now I've removed the area and I've got about a two inch area where I'm going to refine this and bring it down just really gradual thin cuts until I get the thickness that I'm looking for to match the the area just above it there's moisture and um, shavings building up in the bull gouge and you'd be surprised they can actually block the cutting edge from making a good cut so you got to stop periodically and clean off the bull gouge when it becomes loaded like that here you can see this is my point of view i'm actually shooting with the camera in front of my vision so it's not very easy for me to cut but i'm I wanted you to see this because that's really where you want to be positioned. You want to be standing up and you want to look down at this so you have a good sense of the orientation of the exterior of the bowl as you're making these passes. Slowly removing some of that material so that you can get to more of the wall and just gradually working your way down. You're going to feel it again and then come back in and make a light cut. Now I don't want to go up there too high on this outside wall but I'm going to reduce the thickness of this wall overall just a light touch what I'm turning off here is well under a millimeter probably a quarter of a millimeter just a very thin layer one layer at a time Now there's another way to check the wall thickness too, when you have, especially if you have a wet wood. What's neat is the a light source will shine well through the end grain. So we're going to do that in just a second. I'm going to remove some more material here. I switched back to my 5 8 inch bowl gouge so that I can quickly remove that inner material bring that core down now at this point the wings are definitely moving so I don't want to go I don't want to make an attempt to go up towards the top of the rim anymore because I will definitely damage the bull best case scenario I would just scuff up opposite sides worst case the vibration and the bull gouge hitting that rim will make the rim fall apart and go flying and that's obviously something we don't want to do so basically you work your way down and you don't return up to where you've already turned yet that's why you just take a couple sections at a time and go an inch or two at a time and match up the wall thickness all the way down and you'll have a nice continuous wall thickness and you'll have a thin wall at the same time I'm going to install my J tool rest here my curved tool rest would get in there but this will get in there actually a little bit closer I'm going to get in there so that I can I can get a little bit better support with the bull gouge that's about as high up as I want to go and this is actually a little bit risky it's a thin cut that I'm doing and what I'm doing is I'm just making sure that that wall has a nice even thickness on it now this is what I was telling you about I can take that light shine it in there and look at that we can see right through the ingrain fibers and see that darker path in the middle that's telling me that the bowl is thicker in that area so I'm going to make another pass just through that area very lightly and I'm going to thin it out just enough so that that light shining through there gives us an even thickness and I'll show you what that looks like in just a second You're going to want to see this. This is so cool. This is so neat. We talk about the ingrain being like straws and where it's hollow on the ends and it's long on the sides. And this is a great way to actually visually see it. When you have the moisture in there, it holds those cells open so that you can see exactly where the ingrain is and how 
straw-like it really is. There, now it's now it's even. I'm going to give you a close-up of this in just a second. Hey, if you're liking this video so far, do me a huge favor and click that like button. Yeah, the one right below the screen. Yeah, click that. Thank you. Greatly appreciate that. There are those ingrains. Look at that. The light's shining right through them. It's completely hollow. That's what the ingrain fibers look like. This is just under a quarter of an inch, about five millimeters thick. And you can see right through the ingrain fibers. I think that's so amazing. That's so cool. There's something magical about working with wood like this. You can also see how porous this would be. As it dries, those those typically will expand so they're not they're not hollow like that. But because the water just came out of them, it's literally like like empty straw sitting there. All right, so we'll continue the process. I'm going to use the left wing again. I'm using about um, I'm using a push cut here with the tip of the bull gash pointed about the 10 o'clock position. If the flute straight up is 12 o'clock, I'm turned pointing at about a 10 o'clock position, and I'm just making a push cut into the side of this to clear another area of the wall to be thinned down. I'm getting a little in unstable condition here with this bull gouge because I'm, I'm out over the end of that tool rest a little farther than I want. Right there I grabbed the side of that center and the right side of the bull gouge caught there and that was almost a nasty catch. Luckily it, it didn't grab too hard. You want to be careful not to overload the bull gouge. And that's what was, would have happened right there. If the bull gouge had Going around with this really light cut, but then the right wing grabs that center part. That's a good way to get a nasty catch. All right, so I'm going to switch to my 5 8 inch micro bevel. I've got a video all about this. You're going to want to check this out. If you haven't seen this already, or if you don't have a micro bevel or a bottom feeder, some people call this. This has a couple different things that I need right now. Right now, I need stability. This is a 5 8 inch bull gouge. It's got a lot of weight and it's gonna ride really stable when I have to extend over the end of that tool rest. This, this bull gouge can handle it a little bit better than the half inch bull gouge. But it also has a 65 degree bevel on it. If you notice, I'm holding this and orienting, orienting it almost straight into the bull. So this gives me a lot of reaching capabilities to get down into the bottom of this bull blank and shape this bottom curve and finish up this bowl. So I have all of the material removed, except now I just need to take this last area and just keep reducing it so that it blends in the curve of the rest of the bowl. See that dark area in the middle? That's the heartwood coming through. I was hoping that would be in the bottom of this bowl, and it looks like we're going to get that, so that's nice. You see that? See the orientation? I'm almost straight in with this bull, bull, bull gouge, and it's doing a great job of cutting on bevel right across that bottom surface. Now I'm just working about a two inch area, just like I was doing before, and I'm going to keep reducing that until it is the depth that I want. Then I'll clear out the center. Now I'm making really light cuts here just to bring in that last final thickness. I can feel there's an edge there. Always use a pencil to mark that edge. If you've got an edge that you need to work, use the pencil. The, the advantage of the pencil is it's going to keep you focused on that one area. If for some reason you lose sight of where you should be working on and you start cutting into another area, you might make another area too thin. It's just a great way to assure, ensure that you don't get off track.
Now I can see the very center is still high and that's a little too thick too. So I'm gonna bring that down. I'm actually going to blend this all and finish this up right through the center here. Remember to slow your pace down when you get to the center of the bowl. I talk about that in my wood lathe speed video. Be sure to check that out. Why we slow down in the center of a bowl blank compared to the outer portions of the bowl blank. All right, look at that heartwood in there. It's looking really good. Very nice. Now I'm going to make one more pass. It's going to tie in all of those, those little edges, but this is a very light pass. You can see right next to the bull gouge, it's a paper thin cut. It's just going to help smooth all, that whole area out. All right, one more cut. We're going to do one more cut here. It's another very light pass. Very thin. Just blend it all together. And very light on the center. You want to cut that and not rip it out. If you push across that center, it'll rip out fibers, and we don't want that. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, so now it's time to sand. The way I sand is I sand with the lathe turning and then I'll stop the lathe and I will hand sand areas that the sandpaper has crossed and scratched the grain. So I power sand and then I sand with the lathe off. If you'd like to learn more about sanding wood bowls, I've got a video all about that. You can check it out. It's going to be really delicate with the edges of a live edge bowl. And you want to sand off any kind of tool marks there, just real gently. Sanding with the lathe on. Never going across that center because you'll make a you'll make a moat. But you turn the lathe off and then sand the center. And I sand down to a 320 grit finish, which gives me a really nice smooth finish. There it is. It's looking really good. Now I've got to take that base off of it. Now I'm going to use a jam chuck to reverse mount this to the lathe and then I'm going to take the tenon off and shape the foot. Now if you want to learn more about making your own jam chucks, I've got a video about that. You can check that out. You can use a scrap piece of wood and, and form a jam chuck out of pretty much anything and it's very very useful and they can be used over and over again now this jam chuck is has been used a while ago and I'm trying to center it up here and it's got a little bit of wobble on the face of it so what I need to do is I simply need to true that back up and the, the easiest way to do that is just bring the tool rest up use your bowl gouge and just apply a new curve to the front of that and it'll be turning true if I put the bowl on it right now, that same wobble that you're seeing in the front of the jam chuck will transfer to the bowl. Instead, you just trim off a little bit of the edge. I like to leave a little flat face on here. This gives you more of a gripping area. You definitely don't want to have a point on the uh, front of your jam chuck. And there we go. The front is trued up and we're ready to go. So now I'm going to remount the bowl. I'm going to put a piece of foam in there that prevents it from scratching up the surface of the interior and just simply pull up the tailstock and then recenter that all right and then i position the tailstock and using my half inch bull gouge i'm going to 
start removing that shoulder area and the tendon area because like I said before I definitely don't want that foot to be this large on the bull. So I quickly just start eyeballing and shaping the what will be the foot or the base of this bull. Typically I stay around a quarter of the overall diameter, sometimes a little bit smaller. Liking how that looks. Now I'm going to take the foot size down just a bit. I don't need it to be quite that big. I'm going to take that down and I'm also eyeballing across to make sure it's level so this will seat flat on a tabletop. Now you can see the area that I need to work on. I need to blend the foot into the side of the bowl and I still need to remove some of that shoulder area. I'm just using a scraping pull cut and I'm gently just pulling it back into along the curve of the exterior of bull shape. Now I'm going to drop the handle and do the shear scraping cut here and that's going to help me just lightly shave that surface so that I can blend it into the existing bowl and smooth it out all at the same time. Shaping the side of the foot and then pulling that out and then shear scraping and just shear scraping it away. You can see the wood there that I just exposed, how, how wet that is. And you can see that the thin walls of the bull are drying pretty quickly. The foot of the bull right now is thick and it's filled with moisture. If I just left this right now, there's a good chance there's gonna be cracks along that foot because it's a lot thicker and it's holding moisture. It's gonna hold moisture longer than the remainder of the bull. So I, I need to make the base of this bull about the same thickness as the wall of the bull. So in order to do that, I'm gonna hollow out the foot of the bull in just a second. That's looking really good. So I'm gonna sand those the area and blend that, and I'll sand that down to 320, so everything on the exterior of the bull has been sanded and is at the same finish. And now you're looking at the finished exterior of the bowl. Now we have to finish up the foot. Like I said, we don't want to leave a big thick area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hollow out this foot. And I want to hollow it out down to the bottom curve of the bowl. So if you can imagine, if you visually draw like a curved line from the sides of the bowl through the foot, I want this inside area to match that. So I'm using a pull cut to thin out the sides of the foot. I'm gonna make them a little bit thicker than the walls of the bull, but they're gonna be relatively thin, hollowed feet. And I'm using very light cuts here because I have that flute open straight up. I've gotta make sure that I'm, I'm making really light cuts. Otherwise I can get a nasty catch here and I don't want that. So I'm just delicately removing a little bit of material at a time until I've shaped the inside of the feet and the bottom of the bowl itself. Again, very light cuts here. Definitely don't want the bull gouge to touch on the sides there. If either of the side wings were, were to touch something right there, you would definitely get a catch and it would probably throw the bull right off the lathe. So I'm going to take that nub down to make it smaller, reduce the size of it. And when you're doing this, you don't want to add any more compression with the tailstock. Don't tighten the tailstock at this point. It should be pretty snug. Now I'm switching to my spindle detail gouge. This is a 3 8 inch spindle detail gouge. And I'm going to continue that curve of the bottom of the bowl. And I'm going to take the, the nub down just a little bit smaller. And then I'm going to shape the curve of the bottom of the bowl right into that nub. Now I'm going to press forward, which is going to cut that stub, and I turn the lathe off at the same time. Now I can hand turn it, and I will get a separation right here. And you can take the piece off just like that. There's the final bowl shape. Now I'm going to use a an oil finish on this. I have a I love I love tried and true products. I use tried and true 
Danish oil. I use tried and true original oil. And I really like the, both of those. This is um, tried, tried, tried and true Danish oil, which is pure linseed oil. When I say pure, there's absolutely nothing else added to this. There's no metal dryers. There's no other chemicals. There's nothing. That's why I like this product so much. If you're interested in this and any of the products that I'm using, I've got links in the description below, or you can go to my recommended equipment guide on my website. If you go to turnawoodbowl.com and look up at the top of my menu, you will see recommended equipment and you can check it out there. It's under the finish finishing equipment. So basically you're going to put a thin coat of this on and if you see that there's oil on the bowl, that's enough. You don't have to put any more than that. You definitely don't want it to be thick. As this cures, it will solidify. And if you have a thick layer of it, it'll become gummy. If you put the thin layer on, it will, it will dry proper and it will be great. And you can apply multiple coats of this. Look at that. Heartwood and just the overall appearance of this just really sings with this. Danish oil. What I end up doing is, because, because there will be some areas that will have a little bit thicker, I leave this on for about 10 minutes, then I'll come back with a clean cloth and I'll wipe it off and make sure that it knocks off any of the thicker areas. Uh, just this turned out so nice. I'm really, really happy with this. Pecan is just a gorgeous wood to turn. Look at that. Wow. Try to make that curve of the bowl be continuous so it appears as if it goes right through the foot of the bowl, which it pretty much does. Well, there it is, a beautiful live edge, thin walled pecan bowl. I gotta tell you, I'm really happy with this. It's very exciting to see this come together. It's fun to turn green wood. You get big, long, curly shavings because that ingrain is full of water and just cuts instead of breaks off and gets brittle sometimes when we have tear out. You don't get tear out very much with green wood. So that's one of the nice advantages of turning green wood. And when you take your time at the beginning and balance this bowl blank, the top sides and the lower sides of the saddle, you have the chance to have a really cool centered pattern here. We got a little bit of the heartwood that came through real nice. Just, just a really nice bowl all around. All right, and I've got a ton of other information for you. YouTube will only let me put five links up in the video, like as you're watching this. So what I did is there's a bunch of other videos that pertain to this video that if you're learning how to turn bowls, you're going to want to watch those. You got the, how to turn the tenon, how to remove a tenon, how to sand, all those good things. I got a bunch of those videos. Look down in the description below, and I've put a whole list of those other videos you're going to want to watch. And check those out to learn all of the techniques that we did here in a little bit more detail. If you're new to turning wood bowls and you're getting excited about it, but you're having a little bit of frustration in figuring out all the different steps, then check out my online wood bowl turning start to finish e-course. You're going to want to check that out. It's a great opportunity to quickly learn everything you need to know to make wood bowls and make them super efficient without the frustration. So check that out. All right, guys, if you like this video, do me a huge favor, click that like button. And if you're not subscribing, please subscribe and click that bell and you'll be notified when my next video comes out. If you've turned a live edge bowl or if you've turned pecan before, or if you want to share a comment on anything, leave me a comment below. I'd greatly appreciate that. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, happy turning.